Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to Course in Miracles Lessons Live. And we have a beautiful lesson today, Lesson 121. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Here is the answer to your search for peace. Here is the key to meaning in a world that seems to make no sense. Here is the way to safety in apparent dangers that appear to threaten you at every turn and bring uncertainty to all your hopes of ever finding quietness and peace. Here are all questions answered. Here, the end of all uncertainty ensured at last. The unforgiving mind is full of fear <clears throat> and offers love no room to be itself. No place where it can spread its wings in peace and soar above the turmoil of the world. The unforgiving mind is sad without the hope of respite and release from pain. It suffers and abides in misery, peering about in darkness, seeing not, yet certain of the danger lurking there. The unforgiving mind is torn with doubt, confused about itself and all it sees, afraid and angry, weak and blustering, afraid to go ahead, afraid to stay, afraid to waken or to go to sleep, afraid of every sound, yet more afraid of stillness, terrified of darkness, yet more afraid, more terrified at the approach of light. What can the unforgiving mind perceive but its damnation? What can it behold except the proof that all its sins are real? The unforgiving mind sees no mistakes, but only sins. It looks upon the world with sightless eyes and shrieks as it beholds its own projections rising to attack its miserable parody of life. It wants to live, yet wishes it were dead. It wants forgiveness, yet it sees no hope. It wants escape, yet can conceive of none because it sees the sinful everywhere. The unforgiving mind is in despair without the prospect of a future, which can offer anything but more despair. Yet it regards its judgment of the world as irreversible and does not see it has condemned itself to the despair. It thinks it cannot change, for what it sees bears witness that its judgment is correct. It does not ask because it thinks it knows. It does not question, certain it is right. Forgiveness is acquired. It is not inherent in the mind which cannot sin. As sin is an idea you taught yourself, forgiveness must be learned by you as well, but from a teacher other than yourself. Who represents the other Christ self in you? Through him, you learn how to forgive the small self you think you made, and let it disappear. Thus you return your mind as one to him who is your Christ self and who can never sin. Each unforgiving mind presents you with an opportunity to teach your own how to forgive itself. Each one awaits release from hell through you 
and turns to you imploringly for heaven here and now. It has no hope, but you become its hope. And as its hope, do you become your own. The unforgiving mind must learn through your forgiveness that it has been saved from hell. And as you teach salvation, you will learn. Yet all your teaching and your learning will be not of you, but of the teacher who was given you to show the way to you. Today we practice learning to forgive. If you're willing, you can learn to take the key to happiness and use it on your own behalf. We will devote 10 minutes in the morning and at night another 10 to learning how to give forgiveness and receive forgiveness too. The unforgiving mind does not believe that giving and receiving are the same. Yet we will try to learn today that they are one through practicing forgiveness toward one whom you think of as an enemy and one whom you consider as a friend. And as you learn to see them both as one, we will extend the lesson to yourself and see that their escape included yours. Begin the longer practice periods by thinking of someone you do not like, who seems to irritate you or to cause regret in you if you should meet him. One you actively despise or merely try to overlook. It does not matter what the form your anger takes, you probably have chosen him already. He will do. Now, close your eyes and see him in your mind and look at him a while. Try to perceive some light in him somewhere, a little gleam in which you never had noticed. Try to find some little spark of brightness shining through the ugly picture that you hold of him. Look at this picture till you see a light somewhere within it, and then try to let this light extend until it covers him and makes the picture beautiful and good. Look at this changed perception for a while and turn your mind to one you call a friend. Try to transfer the light you learned to see around your former enemy to him. Perceive him now as more than friend to you. For in that light, his holiness shows you your savior, saved and saving, healed and whole. Then let him offer you the light you see in him and let your enemy and friend unite in blessing you with what you gave. Now are you one with them and they with you. Now you have been forgiven by yourself. Do not forget throughout the day the role forgiveness plays in bringing happiness to every unforgiving mind with yours among them. Every hour, tell yourself, Forgiveness is the key to happiness. I will awaken from the dream that I am mortal, fallible, and full of sin, and know I am the perfect Son of God. So what a beautiful lesson in forgiveness today. It's like having a, an angel whisper in your ear, you know, there's only one of us. We are one self. We are created by God as one self, indivisible, and we cannot be broken apart into pieces. So if we are the same one, then there cannot be such a thing as friends and enemies. And that's what the lesson is 
is doing. It's one of these beautiful guided meditation lessons from Jesus that is designed for us to practice with one who would be called an enemy and one who would be called a friend to look for that speck, that spark of light, that little glimmer of light in one perceived as an enemy and then transfer it to the friend to, to feel the full impact of that vast, vast light. And you could just think for a moment, like what, what a way to live your life if you don't have enemies. You know, they always talk about how Jesus, he didn't just forgive the ones that, that liked him or that adored him, but the seeming enemies. And, and I think that is a love that's unconditional because it literally sees no enemies because it sees nothing as a part from itself. It's a unified state of awareness. Another way of looking at it is to say, wow, I simply see that there are no separate interests. Imagine that as you seem to navigate through this world, you held that one thought in your mind that there are no separate interests, no private interests, no personal agendas, no one wins, no one loses, no one gains, no one falls back, uh -huh. no one backslides, you know, it, it's a unified perception of just seeing everything is completely united. And that's how we experience ourself as one self united with our creator. That's how we see there's only one of us. So imagine that that would be a whole different way of living than the world of supply and demand than the world of actions and reactions, the world of what did they say, what did they do, when you don't really hold in mind the, the doer, you're not identified as the doer in yourself or in anybody, and you just simply behold the world. What a blessing to behold the world without judgment. What a blessing to offer love and light to everyone and everything. Imagine you had this sense of love that was so strong in you and extending through you and radiating out to everything and everyone in the world. And you knew that it was an unstoppable love. You knew that you didn't need any form to be in any particular way for their love to shine. <laughs> you, you, you were not uh, circumstance dependent, you were not situational dependent, you were not dependent on images and appearances for your happiness. To be really free, that is the way to live. In fact, I'd say that's the only way to relate, to be in relationship with the Source, God, is, is therefore to be in relationship with everything and everyone, because they're all in mind. They haven't left the mind, and, and then you feel relaxed. And if you make a judgment of something in form, then that is just the belief in externals, the belief that there's something outside the mind, and that is simply not true. God created us in spirit. God created us as love, to be love, to extend love. And love is all that we can extend. So rejoice. Today we will practice this beautiful lesson. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Workbook lesson 121. And be exceedingly glad in your joy. Feel the glee of oneness. <laughs> Feel the glee of unity. Feel the, the absolute radiating happiness of God's love in, in your heart, radiating to everything and everyone. So thank you for joining me with this live. Look to see you again and, and experience this joy day by day.
day by day, we, we go forth in, in the glory. Thank you. God bless.